So the Las Vegas Raiders just lost yet again to the Kansas City Chiefs. And yet again, it appears as though our head coach, Antonio Pierce, is absolutely clueless and has zero control over the offense or the defense. And again, is just looking like he's a spectator out there on the field. And listen, guys, I understand. I, I don't want the coaching carousel either. But as I was explaining in the live stream for any of you who caught that, there is a difference between having a head coach who may have some a losing streak in year one, but he's rebuilding everything and putting everything back together. And that's kind of what other coaches in the NFL have done. And then they have a winning season. But those coaches, you see, they have a play placard in front of their face. They're yelling at their players, getting them into position. They're yelling at their offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators and talking to people. And they are, they are orchestrating everything that's going on. But contrast that to Antonio Pierce, and he's literally just a spectator out there. He comes out and he holds the press conference. He gives the speech in the locker room and tells everybody to smoke their S and talk their S and this and that and everything else. But that's it. That's, that's all we're seeing from Antonio Pierce. And I, for one, who was a big time fan of Antonio Pierce and apparently ignorantly so, I thought that he was going to bring a lot more to the table. When he was questioned about being a rah-rah guy and not knowing the X's and O's and responded, you know, I didn't win a Super Bowl and, and be the captain of my team and all this stuff by not knowing X's and O's. I thought by that, what he was saying is he's going to be a much bigger part of the X's and O's and the game management than what he is. But at this point, Antonio Pierce, is, he's, he's a spectator. And so, yes, you don't want to have the head coach carousel. That's not a strategy for winning. But that's when you when you have a head coach. And right now we don't have a head coach. We have a cheerleader. And I love Antonio Pierce as a Raider Nation alumni fan, growing up, all of that stuff. And once a, a Raider, always a Raider. So this isn't hate on Antonio Pierce. But Antonio Pierce is not a head coach. Let's just be 100% honest with ourselves. Ant Antonio Pierce should be fired after this game. And he should be fired after this game because of a couple of different reasons. One of them is just being clock mismanagement, timeout mismanagement. Uh, the other is player personnel mismanagement. And the third reason really is because he's not head coaching. He's, he's not, he's spectating. So why do you need a head coach if he, all he's doing is being a spectator? His headphone is always flipped up. I've said this before. Watch him on the sidelines. His hands are empty because he doesn't have a playbook in front of him. I don't care if you're not the play caller. I don't care if you're delegating that to your guy. But even then, you should have a placard in front of you. You should know what's going on, be keeping track of the plays that have been run. And when your offensive coordinator says, hey, you know what? We're going to run on first down and we're going to run on second down and we're going to get in third and long. And then I'm going to throw a screen pass. That's when the head coach says, you know what? You have already tried that three times in this game. I want you to give me a deep, deep route. I want you to give me a dig route. I want you to give me this. I want you to give me that. And then the head coach calls that play into uh Either he calls the play into the quarterback or he tells the offensive coordinator what play that he needs to do. But that's not what Antonio Pierce does. Again, empty hands. Empty hands standing there like a spectator. So that's the first part of this video is that Antonio Pierce, I, I think he should be fired today. Um, I, I, we're at home. Okay, we've got, a, we've got a game coming up against the Cincinnati Bengals. And uh, obviously Desmond Ritter needs to be the starter for that. And that's going to be the second part of this uh, video. But right now you don't want to wait. Listen, whoever is going to be the head coach. And, and, and I, again, I think Lugetti should be fired at this point in the season as well. He's not a good offensive coordinator. He is, he is not a good play caller. 
he is not a good play designer. And so you, you just cut, cut cord with it right now. Cut your losses, right? And at some point, you've got to stop the gambling on a head coach who has no experience and an offensive coordinator who is a proven failure. So both of those guys should be fired today. End of story. And I don't care who you put in the position. Uh, maybe you bring in John Gruden back as offensive coordinator. Not head coach, but just interim offensive coordinator for the rest of the season. He's available, and we would have a much better offense running under John Gruden as offensive coordinator today. Secondly, and, and maybe you make Patrick Graham head coach, interim head coach, because Listen, we're going to lose Patrick Graham at the end of the year. Anyway, he's going to be a head coach somewhere. So might as well just make him the interim head coach. At least he's play calling and he's engaged. Right? So that's that's what I think the Raiders should do right now. If you agree, drop a comment down below and let me know. Should we fire Antonio Pierce right now and Luke Getze bring John Gruden in as offensive coordinator and you know elevate... Um, Patrick Graham is the interim head coach. That's the first part of this video. Now we got a second part that we want to get into, but also guys remember that if you're just brand new to this uh, channel, make sure that you're subscribing because we do giveaways to our subscribers because even when the Raiders suck, the Raider D podcast still loves the Raider nation and we still give giveaways and to enter the giveaway, you just have to be a subscriber and like this video and then Comment down below, Draft 2025. That is the keyword. We're only 100 subscribers away from 10,000. When we hit 10,000, we're doing a grand prize giveaway valued at over $300. And we will pick a random video with a random commenter who is a subscriber of Draft 2025. That's the keyword that I want you to comment on this video right now. So get to it, let's go, and maybe you will win the grand prize. And we also have minor prizes that we give away on a regular basis as well so make sure that you stick around uh, or make sure you comment in order to get for that so let's get into the second part of this video real quick and that is this Gardner Minshew should be cut from the team dropped down to the practice squad Carter Bradley elevated to QB2 and uh, Desmond Ritter be nominated as QB1 right now even though Desmond Ritter has never taken a snap with the silver and black. He should be QB1 right now because what else do we have to lose? Gardner Minshew cannot be counted on to win a game. He cannot be counted on to hold on to the ball. He cannot be counted on to not throw an interception. I know that he got a couple touchdowns. Those were some garbage time stuff. Actually, I think he only got one touchdown and that was in the garbage time. But you cannot count on Gardner Minshew to win you a game, so why is he here? We are better off with Brian Hoyer as QB1 than Gardner Minshew at this point. So I think that not only should he be benched, I think he should literally just be cut from the active roster and drop down to the practice squad. Now, now, why not just cut him all together? Well, because you still have to pay him that $15 million guaranteed that he has in his contract. Thanks a lot, Tom Telesco, for that one. But if you drop him down to the practice squad and somebody else picks him up, they'll now be responsible for that cap hit and it'll hopefully save us some money. I don't think anybody would pick him up, but at the very least, um, you're, you're, you're still, if you're going to pay him, you might as well leave him on the practice squad just in case you absolutely have to. Let's say Desmond Ritter got hurt and then Carter Bradley got hurt and we have no quarterback. Then, okay, you can elevate him back up at that point. But I think Gardner Minshew, Minshew Mania is dead. It's done. Raider Paul, my man, you used to come onto my live streams every single time and give me hell about saying that Gardner Minshew is a bad quarterback and the Minshew Mania is fake. Don't buy into the hype. He's not a good quarterback. You used to give me hell about that. You are quiet as a church house mouse now, Raider Paul. Where are you at, my man? Why are you not commenting anymore? Is it because your boy, Gardner Minshew, is not good, like I said, and you're not man enough to come back and give me some credit after all the hell that you gave me? 
Well, I would love to see it. And if you do, I'll post your comment. Let's see if you're a big enough man. Because, hey, I was wrong about Antonio Pierce, and I'm big enough to say I was 100% wrong. I'm sorry, Raider Nation, for ever saying that Antonio Pierce would be a good head coach. I was wrong. But I wasn't wrong about Gardner Minshew being a bad quarterback. So, Raider Paul, this one's for you, my friend. Are you going to comment on this video or not? Because I know you're watching it. Are you going to comment and admit that you were wrong? Until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Let's go Raiders.